Hi, Mark Savage here, and welcome to my channel. What are we talking about today? Well, I think you can see Jaguar's XJ. This is the three liter twin turbo version portfolio, which means it's got quite a nice spec. These are beautiful cars. From the side, front, or rear, they are beautiful looking cars. This is a 2010 and my car. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the good, not so bad, and the ugly of owning a Jaguar XJ. There's a few upgrades they've done. This 2010, 2013, 15, upgraded a few little bits, and there's a newer model out for 2017. But to be honest with you, from the rear, there's not a lot you'll notice, except it's got Jaguar right under here. I quite like this D-badge with just the symbol here, to be honest with you. This is the short wheel version. The long wheelbase version is only six inches bigger, but even harder to park. Remember, these are a big car, and an average parking bay in a supermarket, you will be tipped to toe, literally on the white lines, if not poking out a little bit. So, it makes more sense to go for a short wheelbase. It's got that very mean looking huge grille. Now, from the front, the XF and the XJ, you can be mistaken looking the same. It's mainly from the rear and the size of it, you know it's an XJ. Of course, I put a private registration plate on it to hide the year. Because I said, there's not a lot of difference in the models. So as long as they're clean and tidy, which this one is, you really couldn't tell what year it is. These are the main and low beam. These are your indicators. And these ones here light up the road when you're turning right or left. And these are your running lights. The LEDs on here aren't the brightest, but they are eight years old. So first generation LEDs. New ones are much brighter. But still, you're seen on the road. These rear lights really are pretty. And they light up very, very well. And the brake lights. Again, you've got sides and a center. These twin pipe exhausts, they are lovely. And it has actually a very nice sound, even though it's a diesel. And you can spot the rear view camera here. Let's get to the toys, something I love. It does get better. This is quite a large boot. 520 litres, they say. Moan about the entrance size and the lip. They're saying that the others in this same range, which is BMW 7 Series and the E-Classes, they've got a bigger boot. But hey, how much more do you actually want? I think it's big enough. And here's the part I love. Oh yes. Come on. I love that. But they wind down very quickly. And for the rear, you do get a lot of room. Let's have a look. As I said, this is a short wheelbase version. And I'm only a short ass, five foot nine, so there's my seats, but a lot of leg room in the back there. I'm gonna start by saying about the stereo system. There's Burroughs and Winkleman. This has got a 1200 watt, 20 speaker, two subwoofer system in here. It really does go loud, we'll have a listen in a minute. The long wall base version, you get an extra six inches. These have little tables on. And some other models, you also get to be able to move the seats. But I didn't need it in this one and I'm more than happy with the climate control and heated rear and cooling seats as well here. And of course, you get this middle compartment, which can get cups in and so on. Nice headrests, beautiful leather, door pockets, lights, and you can get your papers and stuff in there. May end up with a few sweet wrappers if you've got kids. Looking up, twin sunroofs, both with blinds, and you even get a rear blind if someone comes up. Tinted side windows and rear, but they're blind. I mean, how nice is that? But this car isn't about just the rear, it's the drivability of it as well. And I have to say, from in here, beautiful. As we get into our car, again, nice speakers and the subwoofers. You have your normal window controls and your seats. These are the memory controls here for three people. And then this, I believe it's 20 points adjustability of these seats. Boot opening from in here, fog lights and adjustable lights. So as we close the door, we have two screens here. 
and not clocks. Push button start. Let's just mention this massive key. It really is a suitable size key that can stay in your pocket. There's also a little sliver key here, it comes apart, and if you never need to get in with the key, it can come out. And a massive amount of steering wheel information there. Volume control, modes, cruise control, phone, heated steering wheel. And this is a beautiful steering wheel. I really do love the colour of this interior and the beautiful wood inside here as well. As you can see from the passenger seat, they have the same as you. Three memories, the same 20 seat moving around with. Beautiful embossed headrests. Very nice lever. It's only got 52,000 on the clock. So I'm a little bit upset with how this lever's been treated. I've fed it, if you watch my other video, it's a lot better than it was when I first got it. Here we have the roof controls. You've got two blinds here and the sunroof goes up and out. Obviously your sun visor and a mirror as well. People say about this clock, I must admit, I quite like it. Some people have said it looks like something from Argos and some people have said it's the best thing since sliced bread, but actually it's quite nice. Controls are here, locking, unlocking, your menu parts, your aircon controls and your radio, CD player. This is rather yummy. This is your gear knob <laughs> or gear dial. Handbrake and obviously the coins and so on. You may notice the electric switch here. This has been changed. Originally, if you're sitting here, you can see a sat nav. And if you're over here, you can see the television. This one's been upgraded in television when you're driving. Pretty sure it's illegal. But hey, maybe when you're parked up, be nice. Coins and bits and bobs. And your mess. In here, though, you have got an iPod, USB, and aux as well. Okay. Foot on the pedal, push the start button. You see the steam will go nicely down then. <laughs> That's my settings. And there we have a very, very beautiful dash. Now with these buttons, you can control what it does here. There's not a huge amount of control, I've got to say, but the basics, that's all you need. You can go through the warning trip computer and displays and so on. And if left for, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, it will go back to your rev counter, like though. Miles per gallon. I did a 430 mile trip. I was doing 70 mile an hour all the way. Stuck to the speed limit. Cruise control, it was lovely. I got 48 to the gallon, which is amazing. They say around town 30, 40 miles to the gallon and on a good run maybe 50 so full shape i was ecstatic with that 83 litre tank some say 82 so you're gonna get a lot of diesel in there so let's get to the first moan of the day i said there are a few the screen itself is a bit slow to react you have to literally push and then you can go through what you want and then you climb it you've got your front seat system here for your heated now, did I mention these are heated, cooling, and massaging? Yeah. Back seats heating and cooling, not massaging. Other models, I think, do have it. The massaging seems to be like little airbags, and it goes from your butt up to the top of your spine, basically, and it pushes in, pushes out, pushes in, pushes out. Actually feels very nice. Goes for about 10 minutes and turns off, and you can re-engage it again. Phone and your sat-nav. And obviously you have to agree. And there we are. Now, you have to push quite hard on the old sat nav to make it do what you want to do. And sometimes I found it when I'm going for the climate, I'm driving, going to the radio, you're pushing, you're pushing, and you seem to be pushing around. It's quite common, and you've got to remember, it is an eight year old sat nav. So the new models, they've corrected that, they're a lot better. It's something you just put up with. These windows, very fast, very smooth. Now the stereo, as I said, 1200 watt. This is the portfolio, the Lux and Premium Lux. I think they're about 600 watt and they move around 850 and so on. So you just go to the audio. 
Let's go on base, throw your roll money, let me put on my screw face I'm paranoid at the thing I'm hanging out, partying it with girls that never die The CEO's picking on the My safe end days That's a nice stereo system And it has bass and all the usual adjustments that you want to do Now, big moan of the day This Let's just turn the engine off for this I watched a few reviews, nothing said about it until it owned one. You're driving along, normal weather, it's fine. Sunshine, fine. Of course, here it's January now. We're getting a few cold mornings. And I've found every time I've drove this car, in the morning, it starts to like creak and crack. When you go on the old forums, you'll see that they agree with this. Now, it does drive you to distraction. It's cracking and cracking and cracking. Every time you go over a small manhole or a small twig on the road, it cracks and creaks, and it does drive you mad. So I found in the forums, they say Vaseline. Now, a lot of people, all in America and so on, have gone to the main dealers back and forth, back and forth, five times, and because it's, I guess it's intermittent fault, it's only when it's cold, the moment the car warms up, you don't seem to hear it. So it's the glass and metal, I guess it's the heat and how they cool down and so on, it's making it do it. So the forum says Vaseline everywhere. So I've done that. Literally every part that's not and is moving, I've Vaseline the rubbers. And this morning when I drove it, it didn't do it. So it does work. Gloves on, Vaseline everywhere. I do mean everywhere. To be honest with you, like someone else said, I was quite happy to just silicon it shut. You don't need a sunroof. It's nice to see it, but you've got cooling heated seats, air con, why do you need a sunroof? Again, this very, very beautifully done. Now, I said on my one, I've got this button here that puts the TV on. And there we have it. There's a little bit of wrinkling around to try and get the volume. And uh, I haven't read it properly yet. So, you press the mode button, I think, and then you can get your volume out of it. But as I said, I haven't worked it out yet. But this is where I'm not supposed to be able to see that from this angle. And from this angle, you are. He paid £1,600 for a free view digital television in here. So, very nice. Need to read the manual a bit more. So don't often come with this little button. And it's something to do with this part here. But anyway, still very nice. Find the brake and turn off. Just because you're a Jag owner doesn't mean you're not going to go under here. Button's nicely located in the middle. And there's your 3 litre twin turbo, 275, 271, yeah, great horsepower. Normal for your washer fluid, battery connections. Now your battery is in the boot. Pulling this nice little clip, raising it up and clipping it there, marvellous idea. And there's your rather large battery. And you get a spare tyre. Unclip, pop down. Press button. Job done. I do love that. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't do your very basic servicing, i.e. air filter, oil and so on. I don't suppose you have to go to main deal on a car this age. The previous owner had a slight leak on the turbo. I heard they mess around about 100,000 miles, 51,000, and it started to leak oil, had to get it redone. So, new turbos on this. Cam belt on this one. Now, cam belt, Cam belt on here says 70,000 or seven years. Again, I've looked at a lot of forums and they say realistically 10 years. This has got 52,000 miles and eight year old. Do I do the cam belt? It's difficult. You're looking between five and 700 pounds to get that done. But that's all you're gonna be talking about under there, really. So far, we spoke about the good, a little bit of the bad with the sunroof. Well, annoying. Now for the really, really bad. These are very beautiful 20 inch alloys and this car, unfortunately, was driven by a person who didn't really care about them. And you can see they are really badly scratched. They're diamond cut alloys. You're going to be looking between 80 and 100 pounds to get these repaired. But that's not the bad part, because that's not really the Jag's fault. I'm talking about these, the wheel nuts. A major, major, major design error. They're weak. They seem to jam on and they snap. This happened to me when I got both tyres replaced recently. They used a rattle gun 
span them off, put the new one on, put the bolts back on and snap. And then it was, oh dear mate. So it cost me 20 pound extra to get the broken wheel nut off. And use the rattle gun again. Now I've looked on forums that say, do not use the rattle gun, use the torque wrench and so on. So now I've got 10 nuts here that are gonna snap when I try and get them off again. And I'm really, really unhappy with that. I tried getting one off there. And this was after I used it and yes, it snapped. So as you can imagine, I'm uh, not happy with that at all. Um, I took the other side, got three off, and I started thinking I don't want to snap anymore. So I'm going to have to buy another 20 wheel nuts, get these all off, and replace them with much better ones than the one there now. They seem to be like two pieces, they just snap, and it's not clever, not good, and that's the real ugly part of it. So there we go. Beautiful, beautiful car. I didn't mention, from locked, you can get in this car from any door just by pulling the handle. I really like that. And lock the car from any door. That gets a thumbs up. Let's just do a recap. This is all round a beautiful car. Aluminium body, 48 to the gallon on a good run, 30 to 40 round town beautiful three litre twin turbo engine that actually gives you a lot of power may catch you out if you're doodling and you slam your foot down you do go spec say eight litre gearbox this one has a six litre gearbox so don't be fooled when you put in specs on these you have to look at the 2010 model six speed automatic gearbox not an eight 275 brake 271 three litre yes some say 18 to 20 inch alloys, these are 20. 245, 40 by 20s at the front, and 275 by 40 at the rear. They are gonna cost you 200 and odd pounds each. You might get some part wall ones for cheaper. Now, as I mentioned, aluminium body. I'll be honest with you, very, very light steering at the front. It can catch you out slightly if you're heading towards a roundabout on a slight curve and up a hill you seem to be carrying a lot of speed and you sort of panic a little bit because it's very, very light. Lots of gadgets and fun bits inside, even for an eight-year-old motor, and something I forgot to show you. I mentioned it earlier. When you press the start button, come on. Reverse. Yeah, it's got that annoying door beeping thing that shut the door. Has a nice reversing camera that also turns when you do. Drive, seat belt here, and you also have sport mode, which you push down slightly. Now other people have mentioned that the clocks go red. Why well, didn't? But it still does work really well. And I found in sport mode, that stiffened the suspension, and when I head to the next roundabout, which I mentioned a minute ago, it was a lot better. Don't forget to put your park in. A few other gadgets for ice and off-road and your finishing bits and bobs. Aircon works really well. Heated front and rear screens. Always a must, and it's a really handy thing to have. But as I mentioned about the sunroof, you're gonna have to Vaseline in there. And the wheel nuts, well, that's a real bugger, that is. Quite a poor design, really. Ability is beautiful. Brakes, they really are good, I have to say. Good old parking sensors on the rear and the front, and they do work really well with the old green, amber, and red traffic light system. It's really handy to have. Side lights come on when you're steering left and right, that's also handy. Great electric windows, heated screens. Realistically, what more could you want? Well, maybe a drive-by. They really do drive very very nicely no road noise very smooth and the dials do exactly what they say they're supposed to don't buy one of these cars to uh, do naught to 70 mile an hour in the six seven seconds it says it will get there in or naught to 50 drive these cars just for the luxury of driving. Well, all 
that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope it's some information for you. If you fancy buying a Jag XJ, this is the one to get. Take care of yourselves on the road. Watch my other videos. Bye bye.